Hello everybody, my name is Max, I'm going to show you how to get rid of this person. Man, he's gone. Now this tutorial is going to show you only the basics. This is for you to just learn how to do it, and then you can get the ground in and start doing with your own st um, experimental stuff, and eventually learn and get better. Now before you even get to editing, there's a few things you have to do in production. So when you're going out there and shooting, you do have to make sure you have a background with no one in there, and you want to make sure this is on a tripod, uh, nothing moving. It's best to do this in an indoor situation so you don't have any waves moving in the background. Um, that, that's harder, trees, lighting, shadows, it, stuff you can't control outdoors. So this is best to do indoors, It's, uh, but that's not saying you can't do it outdoors, as I'm going to show you right here. Now, there's a few no's what you can't do. You cannot have your actors touching. You want to make sure the shadows do not touch, and especially, keep your camera on a tripod. Now, if you do want your actors to touch and uh, hold hands all of that, or it's just, for example, uh, punch each other as a ghost, that, that's a lot harder. You cannot do that in Premiere. It's called uh, rotoscoping. You have to do it in After Effects, and it's very tedious, and no one likes it. Now, if, you're, if you want to go do that, go ahead. Go for it. I'm not going to stop you, but I'm just letting you know. Start with this, then move on to bigger stuff. Gotta learn your basics. Alright, so we're, we're gonna get started. I already have my clip selected in, in here. Now, this is a very short clip because Sam, the filmer right here, did actually forget to use this back to get a background no one in there. So what I did at the end, end of the main clip right here, I uh, there was a shot where no one was in here, and I took that and kind of did a loop reverse thing, um, and it worked for the main video. Um, I'll throw a few examples up here. Now as you notice in the cor over there, you can see the kind of the waves move back and forward. Uh, it's very tiny and subtle and how the videos um, the end result, I put a blur and then I did my green effects uh, over that, as well as color correction and uh, RGB distort. Now we're gonna get started. We're gonna select this select your top clip, go to effects, type in crop, grab your crop, drag it over there, effect controls, and we're gonna create a new mask. What a mask is is just, I don't even know what it is, but it does this. It, it, it kind of creates the definement layer. Uh, it's, it's selecting what's around it, um, excluding it. You just draw around there, make as many points as you want. You want to keep it simple. You want to make sure it gets enough, but you want to be pretty tight so you can't see any of the waves or anything extra moving. All right, so you go like, okay, nothing's changed here. Still nothing. Click invert. Doesn't do anything. One thing with crop, it's kind of weird, but all you do is throw left any of these to 100, and it will... Bam, we're moving. What it does, it just kind of it defines um, where it should crop. But because we have a mass, you just want one of those to be at 100%. Alright, so now he's gone. Cool. But there's a little crease right there. It, the colors are a little different. Um, well, you want to feather the sounds? Oh, good, like 20, um, maybe even 30. Uh, it depends how your clip is. You gotta define it by yourself. Now it was like, okay, that's better. Um, and later, when you can do, when you add your loots and color correction, yeah, that would fix it. You won't even notice it. But your biggest culprit's gonna be what's in the background. So, if you don't have a clip behind it, that's what you see. It removed it completely, and it did a little shadow fade here. That's just, um, that's the feather. So you gotta have your clip behind it. And this, this layer right here needs to be on the top. Alright, so now they're gone. But what if you wanna keep them? Well, you just keep your mask occupancy a little high or a little low, depending on however you want it. And there you go. Now, this is a very easy thing to do. Uh, you can do a lot more, but when it gets more complicated is motion tracking. Premiere does have a built-in motion tracking feature, which is this thing, just not possible for the, um, the program to pick up what to track. So I'm going to show you how to do a tracking, and it's going to be manual. Alright, so I got my clips here right now. Uh, I have my one without them, one with them. Alright, so do the same thing. Effects, crop, drag it, do your mask. And for this one, let's remove him as well. And this one, you might want to put a little more um, little points here. I'm not exactly sure what they're called. Um, let's go with that. Um, you do need to zoom out, so... Uh, so you can actually clip out here. Now, I might have went a little overboard with this, but it's it, in the long run, it's better to do that. Alright, so let's go all the way in, and let's start tracking. 
Alright, now this one you can kind of get away a lot more. Um, now, as you can see, it goes out of frame. And if you were just to move it there, it would be blocking, um, it would be cutting off Sam right here. So, in order to do this, you need to go to Mask Path. Make sure this is checked. A little stopwatch right here. And we're going to move forward on here. And at, there we go. Got out and just start moving all of these. Now what this does, this starts keyframing. If you don't know what keyframing is, um, you really should, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the basics of everything. Um, I'm not going to really explain that too much because I'm probably going to confuse you more. But it just creates um, these little... It creates these little markers kind of in the timeline to tell, hey, you should move over here. So it creates these markers and as we go along, we'll just start moving them. So right here, I make sure I might want to zoom in a bit with that. Oops. Undo that and play it back. You can see just moving with it as at a sign right there. And just continue on like that. It's as simple as that. Then you do your same thing, do that. And of course your video clip's not under there. And invert it. That didn't do it. Because I didn't keyframe properly. Alright, so I just did it. I spent a little time going along, met keyframing. This is the best way to have to see it work in action. You just, I'm kind of scaling down. It's not that great, but actually I did notice right there that Sam does bump into it, the frame a little. So you want to go back and just go frame by frame. Move it there a little more. And that fixed it. It just starts moving along the timeline, creating these little keyframes over here. So now when we put this into action, actually, because this one was the same way, Sam never did the whole, uh, kind of did that the whole video, just do that. Now this one, nothing's really moving or anything, so you don't really notice too much when it flickers. And we do the same thing, now they're walking together. We can invert it, change over. So that was it. Very simple, very easy. This video was just made to get your foot in the ground, learn, and so you can play with your own. Uh, in order to get uh, better at this, you need to start practicing, just do random projects, go outside, create a little film, and then come back inside and just edit for fun. Uh, I do that sometimes. It, it, it really helps. You gotta um, learn, go on YouTube, find more tutorials, learn a bunch of stuff. That's how you get better. It's all just practicing, and when you screw up even, you learn, oh, you can do that, or you find new ways to create effects and uh, visuals. So please let me know if anything um, I did wrong in here, um, or if I could do something better. Uh, let me know in the comments. Don't just tell me it sucks, because I already know that. But anyways, peace.